Okay, so what is the evidence that time dilation is real and it actually happens? So we're going to look at these cosmic rays. You don't need to know what's going on, but you need to see that they produce at the bottom something called muons. And these muons are unstable and they have a half-life of approximately 1.5 microseconds. Not only that, they're moving very fast, they're moving near the speed of light. So the effects of special relativity are going to apply to these muons. They're going to move between these detectors that we'll set up approximately two kilometers apart. And we're going to see how much of the muons that arrive at detector one, let's assume that 100% arrives here, how much of them will be remaining at detector two. Okay, firstly, we're going to do without special relativity to see what we expect to happen. So we have a bunch of muons here represented by these particles here, and they're moving a bit downwards at a velocity of 0.99 times the speed of light. So the time it takes for them to move from detector 1 to detector 2 is, is what we're going to work out first. So if, if they have traveled a distance of 2,000 2, meters, if we divide it by the speed, which is 0 0.99 times the speed of light, the time it takes for them to travel between these points is approximately 6.73 microseconds. So how many half-lives are in 6.73 microseconds? So if we 6.73 divided by the half-life, which we measured in the lab, so if we get approximately 4.49 half-lives. Okay, so if we have 100% at detector 1, how much is left over at detector 2? So if we do 100 times by half to the power of the number of half-lives, so 4.49, so we're basically multiplying by half 4.49 times. This gives us 4.5%, which isn't that much. So we expect that most of the muons from uh, the first detector don't make it, make it to the second detector. It turns out this isn't what happens. Okay, now we're going to apply special relativity and see if we can correctly predict what's actually going to happen. So firstly, the 1.5 microseconds half-life is if you were standing right next to me once at rest um, and you just measured it in a lab, for example. However, these me ones are moving really fast. So if you're standing next to the detector and you see these me ones going past you really fast, it will look like the time for the me ones was running slowly. So imagine that the mu ones have like a watch on and their time seeming to be running more slowly. So what seems like 1.5 microseconds to the mu one would look a lot longer to the person. So to figure that out, so let's work out the Lorentz factor. So gamma equals one over square root of one minus 0 0.99 squared. So this gives me a Lorentz factor of 0, 7.0. Eight, nine. So I'm going to take the half-life that we have and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by 7.089. So this gives me 10.63 microseconds. So to this person, the half-life of the mu ones that are going past would look a lot longer. 10.63 microseconds. Okay, so now, so if that is the time it takes to go between the detectors, it's still the same. So I'm going to just do that calculation again. 2000 divided by 0 0.99 times the speed of light. 6.73 microseconds. So you can see this the time it takes to go between detectors is not even one half life. So let's figure out how much of a half-life that is. So 6.73 divided by 10.63 gives me only 0 0.633 of a half-life. So if I do 100% at the detector here, if I do 100 times by half to the power of 0 0.6, 3, 3, 
I get 64.5%. So it turns out a lot more arrive here than that was predicted because without special relativity we expected only approximately 4.5 percent to arrive but as you can see a lot more has arrived and the experiments were done and it turned out this was correct 